Hi, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade, coming at you this week with the October 2018 edition of Backtracks, my monthly roundup of notable artist birthdays and album anniversaries, complete with a Spotlight album review. So let's just jump right into it, shall we, with the birthdays. Uh, this month, Italian composer Giuseppe Verdi, also known as Joe Green, would have celebrated his 205th birthday. Uh, French composer Georges Bizet would have celebrated his 180th birthday this month. Uh, the late Janine Deckers, also known as The Singing Nun, would be 85 years old this month. Rock pioneer Eddie Cochran would be 80 years old. Rocker Steve Miller celebrates his 75th birthday this month. A uh, happy 70th birthday this month to the late Johnny Ramone, punk rock pioneer. 65th birthday wishes go out this month to Julian Strickland, drummer for the B-52s. Legendary country singer Tanya Tucker turns 60 years old this month. 55th birthday wishes go out this month to Natalie Merchant of 10,000 Maniacs. Turning 50 years old this month is Ziggy Marley, reggae artist and of course son of the late Bob Marley. Turning 45 years old this month is Brendan Brown, frontman for the rock band Wheatus. A happy 40th birthday this month to R&B star Usher. And happy 30th birthday this month to Stacey Dupree, former keyboardist for the rock band Isley. And now let's go right on into the album anniversaries. 55 years ago this month saw the release of the Andy Williams Christmas album. It was his first of eight holiday albums he recorded. And it was the best-selling Christmas album for two years in a row, 1964 and 1965. It also appeared for at least one week every year on Billboard's Christmas Albums lists every year until it stopped publishing in 1973. The album featured his iconic Christmas song It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year, as well as his renditions of White Christmas, Little Drummer Boy, Silent Night, and Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire. Also released in October of 1963 was folk trio Peter, Paul, and Mary's third album In the Wind. It spent five weeks at number one on the Billboard 200 charts, and featured Hushabye, Stewball, as well as their renditions of three Dylan songs, including Blowin' in the Wind, the single of which sold 300,000 copies in its first week and peaked at number two on the Billboard charts, and also Don't Think Twice It's All Right, which peaked at number nine. In October of 1968, the Jimi Hendrix Experience released their third and final album, Electric Ladyland. It spent two weeks at number one on the Billboard 200 charts and was ranked at number 55 on Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Albums of All Time list. It featured their rendition of a Bob Dylan song, All Along the Watchtower, which was their only top 40 hit, peaking at number 20. It also featured the songs Voodoo Child and Crosstown Traffic. Also released half a century ago this month was the debut solo album by the Mamas and the Papas' Cass Elliot, entitled Dream a Little Dream. It only reached number 87 on the Billboard charts due to less than enthusiastic marketing by the label. It featured her fan favorite songs, California Earthquake and the title track, as well as the Leonard Cohen song, You Know Who I Am, Burn Your Hatred, originally by Graham Nash, and the John Sebastian song, Room Nobody Lives In. 45 years ago this month saw the release of Elton John's seventh and best-selling album, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. It of course reached number one in the US, the UK, Australia, and Canada, and was eventually certified eight times platinum in February of 2014. It featured the smash hit songs Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting, Candle in the Wind, Benny and the Jets, and the title track. Now, as incredible as it might seem, this album never won a Grammy, although it was inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame in 2003. Also released 45 years ago this month was Genesis' fifth album, Selling England by the Pound. It reached number three in the UK, but only number 70 in the US. Uh, it included the fan favorite songs Firth of Fifth, More Fool Me, which uh, was the second lead vocal by Phil Collins before he became the frontman in 1975, and I Know What I Like in Your Wardrobe. Happy 40th anniversary this month to Toto's self-titled debut album. It reached number nine on the Billboard 200 charts and in Canada as well. It also went top 10 in Australia, Sweden, and West Germany. This was before the reunification of Germany. It featured the hit single Hold the Line, which spent six weeks in the top 10, as well as All Supply to Love and Georgie Porgy, which went top 50. Another debut album celebrating its 40th anniversary this month is Dire Straits. It reached number two in the US, number five in the UK, and number one in Germany, West Germany, Australia, and France. 
It featured the hit song Sultans of Swing, which actually didn't become a hit until a year after the album was released, as well as the song Water of Love. Now, as a trivia note, the band name came about after Mark Knopfler's jobs as a writer for the Yorkshire Evening Post and a teacher at Lawton College left him in dire financial straits. 35 years ago this month, Cindy Lauper sprang onto the scene with her debut album, She's So Unusual. It peaked at number four on the Billboard 200 charts and stayed in the top 40 of the chart for 65 weeks. It went number one in Canada and top 10 in six other countries, including Japan, New Zealand, and Norway. It earned her six Grammy nominations, including Album of the Year, and two wins, including Best New Artist. It featured the smash hit singles, including Girls Just Wanna Have Fun, Time After Time, which went top 10 pretty much everywhere, as well as Shebop, which went top 10 in Austria, New Zealand, Canada, and Australia, and All Through the Night. And uh, this album made Cindy Lauper the first female singer with four top five singles on the Hot 100 from one album. Also released in October of 1983 was the sophomore album by Culture Club, Color My Numbers. Uh, it peaked at number two for six weeks on the Billboard 200 charts behind Michael Jackson's Thriller, and it went number one in five countries, including Australia, Canada, and the UK, and top ten in nine other countries. It featured the hit song Karma Chameleon, which went number one in 11 countries, Church of the Poison Mind, one of my personal favorites, which went top ten in seven countries, and Miss Me Blind, as well as It's a Miracle, both of which went top 20 in the U.S. Three decades ago, Anita Baker released her third album, Giving You the Best That I Got. It was her first and only number one on the Billboard 200 charts. It went three times platinum within a year and featured the singles Lead Me Into Love, Just Because, which reached top 20, as well as the title track, which earned three Grammy Awards and was her highest charting single at number three. Also released in October of 1988 was The Traveling Wilburys Volume 1, represented here by my complete collection box set. Uh, it was the debut album by the supergroup featuring George Harrison, Tom Petty, Roy Orbison, Bob Dylan, and Jeff Lynne. Uh, they were formed by accident during what was meant to be a one-time collaboration for a George Harrison B-side. Uh, the album won a Grammy nomination for Album of the Year. It went number one in Australia and Canada and number three in the U.S., which is kind of hard to believe considering that lineup. Uh, it also went top 10 in five other countries. It featured the singles Handle With Care and End of the Line, which both, both of which reached number two on the Billboard Mainstream Rock Tracks chart. A quarter of a century ago, Pearl Jam released their sophomore album, Verses. It set the record for first week album sales, which it held for five years. It went number one on the Billboard 200 charts and stayed there for five weeks. It also went number one in the Netherlands, Norway, New Zealand, and four other countries. It eventually achieved seven times platinum status and earned the band three Grammy nominations. It featured the singles Go, Dissident, which reached top five on the Billboard Mainstream Rock Tracks chart, and Daughter, which reached number one on the same chart. Also released in October of 1993 was God Shuffled His Feet, the sophomore album from Canadian rock band Crash Test Dummies. It was their most successful album, reaching number nine on the Billboard 200 charts, number two in the UK, number one in Australia and New Zealand, but oddly enough, only number 17 in their native Canada, although it did eventually go triple platinum there. It featured the hit single, mm, 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 as well as Afternoons and Coffee Spoons, Swimming in Your Ocean, and the title track. Happy 20th anniversary to Believe, the 22nd album by Cher. It reached number four on the Billboard 200 charts. It went number one in six countries and top 10 in several others. And it revitalized her career and earned her three Grammy nominations, including one win for Best Dance Recording. It featured singles Strong Enough, All or Nothing, the title track, which reached number one in 23 countries. And the album was dedicated to Cher's ex-husband, Sonny Bono, who died in a skiing accident earlier that year. Also released in October of 1998 was uh, not a hit album, but a very meaningful album for me, Transcendental Highway, the fifth album by former Men at Work frontman Colin Hay. Uh, now this album is basically, I was a fan of Men at Work, they were one of my favorite bands back in the 80s, and uh, after Colin Hay released his debut solo album, he kind of fell off my radar, and mind you, this was of course before the internet, you could keep track of what artists were doing and all that. Uh, and I, he basically stayed off my radar until I saw this album at a local record store, which has long since closed. And so I decided to pick it up and give it a try. I had no idea he'd, he had been recording all that time. But uh, needless to say, this album made me pick up every album that he had made before and 
every album since then. I'm to this day, I'm still picking up his albums as soon as they come out. But yeah, this was a great album. It featured uh, the songs "Goodbye, Goodbye, My Red Rose," "I'll Leave the Light On," and quite possibly my favorite Colin Hay song ever, "Don't Believe You Anymore." So go check this album out if you, if uh, if you're even halfway motivated. Uh, Colin Hay is an artist that shouldn't be ignored, honestly. Fifteen years ago, Jamie Cullum released his sophomore album, 20-something. It was his most successful album, the fastest-selling jazz album in UK chart history, and it also made Jamie Cullum the highest-selling jazz artist in UK history. It reached number three in the UK, number two in Australia and New Zealand, and it went top ten in five other countries. It reached number three on the Billboard Top Jazz Albums chart and number 83 on the Billboard 200. It featured standards such as I Could Have Danced All Night, Old Devil Moon, and I Get a Kick Out of You, covers such as Jimi Hendrix's The Wind Cries Mary and Jeff Buckley's Lover You Should Have Come Over, and also origin originals such as All at Sea and These Are the Days. Also released in October of 2003 was Amy Winehouse's debut album, Frank. It reached number 13 on the UK chart and number 61 on the Billboard 200, but as tends to happen, climbed much higher after her death eight years later. It featured the singles Stronger Than Me, Take the Box, In My Head, and F Me Pumps. And uh, the title of the album was reference to not only the candid nature of the lyrics, but also to an early inspiration of hers, Frank Sinatra. Happy 10th anniversary this month to John Legend's third album, Evolver. It reached number four on the Billboard 200 charts. It also went top 20 in Canada, the Netherlands, and Italy. It boasted appearances by Kanye West, Brandy, Andre 3000, and Estelle. And it featured the singles Green Light, which went top 40, If You're Out There, and Everybody Knows. Also released in October of 2008 was Keen's third album, Perfect Symmetry. It was a shift in sound from the piano rock that they were known for to more guitar and synth-based songs. It reached number 7 on the Billboard 200 charts, it went number 1 in the UK, and top 10 in 10 other countries. None of the singles charted in the US, but Spiraling was a top 20 hit in the UK. It also featured the tracks The Lovers Are Losing, Better Than This, and the title track. October of 2013 saw the release of Too Weird to Live, Too Rare to Die, the fourth album by Panic at the Disco. It was produced by Butch Walker and peaked at number two on the Billboard Top 200 charts. It also went top ten in Canada, Scotland, and the UK. It featured the singles Miss Jackson, This is Gospel, and Girls, Girls, Boys. Also released five years ago this month was Paul McCartney's 16th solo album, New. It was his first album of all new material since 2007's Memory Almost Full. It peaked at number three on the US Billboard 200 charts and also on the UK and Canadian charts. And it was his first number one Norwegian album uh, since 1989's Flowers in the Dirt. It featured singles including the Mark Ronson produced title track, which went top 20, as well as Queenie Eye and Save Us. And that brings us to the Spotlight Album of the Month. This album is 45 years old. It is the eighth album by the Steve Miller Band, The Joker. Uh, now, my sister was a big fan of the Steve Miller Band, or she was a fan, I don't know if she was a big fan of them, uh, had a couple of his albums in uh, her CD collection, and so that was the main motivator for me choosing this album as a Spotlight Album, just to uh, dig a little deeper into one of my sister's uh, appreciated artists. and. Uh, I have to say, I like this album. It's uh, it's not a deep album. It's uh, as the cover kind of uh, suggests, and also the title, The Joker. It's a pretty light album, you know, light on lyrical content. Uh, the songs are pretty fun. Uh, this, of course, includes his big hit, The Joker. I can't really pick a favorite song on here. Um, you know, it's just, as I said, it's, it's not remarkable, but it's it's a good album. I, I recommend at least listening to it at some point. Uh, yeah, the, the Joker, of course, as I said, a big hit single. Um, Mary Lou was a good song. Your Cash Ain't Nothing But Trash, which I think might be a cover. Uh, Sugar Babe, Shoe Butter Do My Ma Ma Ma. That was a good one. Yeah, go give this album a listen. I, I Honestly, I can't say a whole, whole lot about it. Uh, it was a good album. Not a great album. Um, will it compel me to dig deeper into the Steve Miller band? Probably, because, uh, I mean... You know, I mean, he's got plenty of hit singles, plenty of songs that I like uh, from his Greatest Hits album that I have. But yeah, this album was... It was okay. Not bad. Not great. So, uh, yeah. Uh, one of the, probably one of the lesser spotlight albums for backtracks, but hey, I'm, I'm not sorry I picked it up. What can I say? So anyway, yeah, I guess that's it for backtracks for this month. Uh, yeah, sorry I couldn't uh, expound more 
verbosely on that album. But yeah, there's just not much to say about it. So uh, do you have any favorite October anniversary albums this month? Let me know in the comments. And uh, any other, you know, suggestions, questions, criticisms, constructive criticisms, uh, please fire away. Uh, subscribe if you haven't yet, if you would please. I'd love to have you a subscriber. And again, that's it for now. Thank you very, very much for watching. Uh, hope to see you soon. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.